Well, hello again. Welcome back to Following to Lead with Kevin East. I'm still Kevin East, and thank you for joining me in this podcast today. Hey, uh, like I say every time, here's why we're here, is to inspire you to follow Jesus in such a way that it changes you. It changes the way that you live and the way that you lead, both at work and at home. And so every Monday we drop new episodes in this podcast, um, all for that same purpose. You see, I don't believe leading starts with leading. I think it starts with following, and I think Jesus calls us to follow him the Apostle Paul said, you follow my examples, I follow the example of Christ. And I think for, for generations, people have been doing the same thing. And so my heart in this podcast is to be learning from and follow the example of the others and inviting people like you, hey, follow my examples, I follow the example of Christ as well. Today, I had a very, very neat woman in this podcast. Uh, her name is Angela Parrott. Uh, she started a ministry called Love God Greatly. Where it's, you can find it at lovegodgreatly.com. And her heart, whole heart is to get women in God's Word. And so she's written all sorts of Bible studies, put together even Bibles. And so, um, in fact, we talked about a young women's Bible that they just put together and released. I'm really excited for my own daughters for. So if you have teenage daughters, you're interested in, in, in being in God's Word as a woman, this, this episode's for you. So hope you enjoy it. Again, this is Angela Parrott from a ministry called Love God Greatly. Here's my conversation with her. Okay, so Angela, I'm really glad you're on the podcast today. You've started a whole ministry that's like, you know, I'm laughing with you ahead of time. It's like in 40 different languages all around. You started this thing, and I have a feeling, and I, I could be wrong, so correct me if I'm wrong, but I have a feeling that you have a grasp, a concept of just how biblically illiterate women are around the world and men, but especially women, because I know you started this ministry to men. And so, you know, how do you fight that at Love God Greatly? I mean, tell me why you started it and how you fight that. Yeah, exactly. So we, I mean, I really started the ministry out of my own need. I was a young mom. I, I have three girls, a 16-year-old, a 14-year-old, 10-year-old. And when my first two uh, were really little, they were 16, you know, they were 16 months apart. And as a young mom, it was really hard to be in God's Word. And so I was struggling to be in God's Word. I was struggling finding the time. I was struggling knowing that I needed to be in God's Word and I needed community. And really, God just birthed love God greatly out of that need. I was having a hard time getting to church uh, because one of my kids would seem like always, she, you know, one of them was always sick, and so I couldn't drop them off. And because of my husband's schedule, it was just really difficult. And so online ministry worked for me. That was a way that, um, you know, not only could I serve the Lord um, in the evenings when my kids went to bed, um, but it was just filled that that need that I had of um, just really being able to be in God's Word. So that's really how Love God Greatly started. Okay, so tell me this. And so you have three girls now. They're older, 16, 14, and 10. We compared notes. We both have a lot of kids. You have all three girls. Bless you. I've got two, and they're awesome, but two's enough for me. And so... You know, you, you find yourself as a young mom, you're like, it's hard to find time in God's Word, and, and I get it. I mean, it's just amazing how crazy life is when you have little kids and you're trying to just get them everywhere. And So how did you how did you start getting into God's Word? I mean, even before you started Love God Greatly, how did you find, you know, in other words, if you were to give advice to a young mom who's right there in that same place, and I've talked to many of them over the years, what do you tell them? How do they make that time? How do they find that time? Well, I, I think, honestly, when I look back at, you know, just that stage of life, first of all, I think we need to lower ex our expectations. I feel like sometimes in our Christian communities, we talk about being God's Word and, and you know, spending hours or whatever, you know, like just, you know, it, you know. You mean you don't, Angela? I mean, come on. No. <laughs> and so just honestly, the first was like lower the expectation, right? Yes. And then also just Great embrace word. God's grace. There were so many times when I was younger, even in high school and college, and then a, a young mom where I was not embracing God's grace and I was again, just having a hard time being God's Word. And so what was happening is when I finally was in God's Word, maybe, you know, I missed a week or whatnot, you know, just because of so many different things. Yeah. I came to Him. Well, first of all, it put a barrier, right? I was like, Ugh. you know, because you had that whole, like, at least for me, when I grew up, the whole image was like, God is waiting for you in the morning. Like, you're missing your appointment with Him, you know? And, and like, you oh, stood like, Him up, Angela. Oh, God. Like, and I was like, oh, my goodness. Like, like so for me, that was a barrier because I'm like, oh, my goodness, when I do, you know, when I am, you know, ready, ready to open my Bible and be in God's Word, he's going to be so mad at me. And so first of all, like, you got to take that out of your mind, right? Just take that yeah. out of your mind and realize that God loves you and he rejoices. He wants to spend time with you. He's always there available. And so the times that you can, when you can open up God's Word and you're feeding the, you know, the babies or whatever, it's late at night, even if you can just read a few verses and just really try to meditate on those verses and hide those verses in your heart, 
That's good. I mean, obviously, like yeah. with my girls right now, I'm wanting them, you know, to like really know God's word more because I'm wanting to basically, you know, build this this knowledge of them up because I know, Lord willing, maybe you know, when they get older, it's going to be a little bit hard depending on the seasons. And I think that's one yeah. thing I didn't realize as a young mom either. Either it's their seasons, right? God created the world with yeah. seasons, and there's seasons in our lives as women. And so I'm in a little bit of a different, still crazy season, but a little bit of a different season now. But that young mom, like just take just embrace god's grace and get the you know i think that's life. a great word yeah. yes i think that's a great word angela that women need to hear men need to hear but that there's these seasons where life is just crazy and i remember i interviewed a guy named andrew farley on my podcast you know a long time ago now and he just laughingly talked about you know we talk about quiet times in the west but there wasn't written word in Jesus' day so we were having like loud times and what, what, you know just kind of making fun of some of those things we put on ourselves so many times and the standards that we set that are so high and a good friend of mine years ago as a pastor told me he said Kevin you know what I do and I'm working through my Bible reading plan and I miss some days you know what I do and I was like what he goes I just pick up uh, on that day that I'm supposed to, supposed to be reading that day as opposed to going, I've got to make up 14 days. I miss these days. He goes, I just pick it up. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that's so freeing. And I think what you're saying, Angela, is so right of just lowering that expectation. And so, okay, so tell me this, uh, the place of God's word in the family, like for moms that are listening, the opportunities that they have um, about just getting God's word involved with their family. Can you talk about that as as well? Yeah, I think it's so important. You know, I think one thing, you know, when we talk about the ministry and moms being in God's word, I think, first of all, I think it's so important for our children to see us in God's word and to see us actually opening up the Bible. There's a difference between, I mean, I have my phone right here and my girls see me, you know, open up the Bible app all the time and, and stuff. But there's something different when they can actually, you know, like wake up in the mornings or whatever time throughout the day, you know, Sometimes it's lunchtime, dinner time, whatever. But when they actually see me in God's word and reading it, I think is so important because that that shows them that hey, I know mom talks about this, but you know what? She's actually making t- sure she has time actually doing it and stuff too. And so I think that's really important with um, just this next generation as as women, just saying yes, it's it's important for you to be in God's word. It's important for me to be in God's word, and just modeling that out in our in our lives for our kids. I love that. Angela, I have to confess something. This is really funny. It's just weird. It, I, and I get it. It's weird. I'm reading out of Mark 14 the other day, and it's Jesus is being arrested, and Peter cuts off the guy's ear, and Jesus is like, what do you think I am? Like, you come at me with clubs and all this type of stuff. And, and then in verse, I think it's 51 and 52 of Mark 14, I'd never noticed this. It says, this young boy was following Jesus, and he was wearing a linen cloth, and they took the linen cloth, and the boy ran away naked. And I don't know why, but I was like, I just thought that was the funniest thing to be in God's word. And so I, I, I had my kids act it out. <laughs> we like laughing at like this kid that I got unwound with his linen cloth and then he ran away naked. And it was just like, this is so weird. Like, what are we doing? But, but to your point, just letting them see us be interested in God's word and the fact that I'm telling them, I've never noticed this before. I, I, you know, why was this included in the Bible? I don't know, but it's fascinating to me. So I love your point about letting them see you in it. Well, I think that's so important too, like what you were just saying of letting your kids know, like, listen, like, I don't really understand this. And this kind of seems a little bit weird and stuff to me too. I think that's, I think that's really good for our kids to hear and to see, um, you know, that we don't have, I mean, my girls know all the time, mom doesn't have all the answers, but I just think seeing that humility and being like, you know what, like, let's research this a little bit more. I'm not really exactly sure why, you know, there has to be a reason why it was included, but I'm not really sure. Let's, you know, let's dive in a little bit deeper. I think that's really good because it also shows it's also modeling for them just, you know, how to, you know, that we don't have to have all the answers and how, how we can find those answers. So I love that. Okay. So Angela, I've known you for all of a whopping 15 minutes now, maybe 20. If, if, if I'm lucky, you strike me as a joyful, gracious woman, which I really appreciate. What is your advice for Christian women that, that struggle with shame or, or maybe to your first point about just the expectation being too high or just, struggling with because i think the temptation is to just want to be isolated and not known then like you feel like you need to hide and and to not be who you are what's your advice to these women that that are struggling with shame and whatnot you know that is so good and honestly crazy enough i feel like that goes back to biblical illiteracy when we really Mm. read the bible and we really read the stories of the people that god used and how jesus you know interacted with women we will see that we do not need to allow shame to hold us back from the Lord. We would we'll see that, you know, that God's gift of forgiveness 
you know, that we our salvation is not based on our works. It's a free gift, right? And I think that goes mm-hmm. back to actually being in God's Word and reading it as women for ourselves and seeing it. There have been times, I remember, there are times in the Old Testament, some stories that I have read, even, you know, as an adult, and I'm like, ooh, don't really like that, or I really don't like how, you know, so-and-so reacted, or, oh, man, that seems kind of harsh. And, and, and part of me as a woman, I can honestly read those stories in judgment and be like, man, Lord, like, God, why in the world did you use that person, right? But then when I look at it again and be like, wow, Lord, thank you for using that person, because you know what? I have been that person mm. in my life also. And I think mm. realize that, that God uses imperfect people, and he uses there you people go, yeah. with a past. And when you can read that and you know those stories, then you know that you are also welcome at his table, and he can also use you. But if you don't know the Bible and you don't know these stories, then Satan can hold you back, and he can keep speaking those lies into your mind, and he can keep holding you back in shame, and then you don't feel like you can approach God, or that is completely, completely false. In Following to Lead, we talk about following Jesus each week, and as we follow Jesus, how it changes us, the way that we live and the way that we lead. It's what I say each time as I open up this podcast. It's one thing to talk about it, it's something completely different to live it out. So I want to tell you about this ministry I get to lead called Mentoring Alliance. Mentoring Alliance is a Christ-centered ministry that supports children and families in the communities that we have the privilege of serving. We say it like this here, that we exist to mobilize godly people into the lives of kids and families to provide tangible help and eternal hope. We do summer camps, after school programs, and we connect godly people as mentors one-on-one with at-risk kids in these communities. You know, if you're passionate about helping kids and families from all different parts of communities, I'd invite you to join us here at Mentoring Alliance. You can find us at thementoringalliance.com. If you'd be willing to help support it financially, that would be great as well. You can do that at thementoringalliance.com slash donate. Again, that's thementoringalliance slash donate. You know, and we live, you know, Angela, we live in a culture where we raise up people on such a pedestal that we just don't think like we can ever live up. I mean, I've got to imagine women are listening to you going, well, here we go again. Angela's a really sweet woman. She's joyful. She's gracious. She started a whole ministry. You know, she, I get it. It's all over the world helping women, but I'm just me. What would you say to, to somebody thinking that right now? Honestly, that is honestly a complete lie that I feel like is holding a lot of women back. Angela is 100% normal and I fail all the time. I depend on God's grace every single day. Um, I'm just, honestly, I'm just amazed at what, you know, what he's allowed me to do, you know, for him and, and to serve him. It honestly is out of um, just a response to my love for him and my gratitude for him and what he's done in my life and how he's redeemed my life. Um, and I just, I want to encourage women that just walk out in obedience to what you have, what God has called you to do. We are all in the same playing field. We're all on the same team. And God has called every single one of us to a different role on this team. And you just live your life in obedience to what he's called you. Um, I tell this one story, I'll just I'll make it super quick. But just to illustrate yeah. that, um, when my mom was a little girl, we, she grew up in a rural area of, of Indiana, and there was another little girl um, who, you know, she came from a really strong family, and this little girl's mom just really, like, emphasized to her daughter about reaching out to others and including others and inviting people to church. And so long story short, this little girl invited my mom to church. And just for one night, my mom went to church. She, accept, she heard, you know, the gospel, accepted Christ. Um, and then God just planted that seed, right? That salvation. And then it took years of other people pouring into my mom's life, right? And there were, hmm. honestly, the people that poured in my, into my mom's life more were local women in local churches, right? Neighbors, mm-hmm. other people pouring into my mom's life. Now, did God use other women, like other teachers and stuff? Yes, like books and authors. and uh, But the real people that God really used to water my mom's you know, faith and get her um, to really love the Lord was just ordinary local women. And then here to find out all these years later, you know, she obviously, you know, raised me up in the faith and stuff. And then she, that little girl ends up having a daughter who runs a ministry, who writes all these Bible mm-hmm. studies and translates them around the world in 40 languages. It started with a mom yeah. and a daughter in their home. Yeah, that's right. So I just, yep. I want people to understand that, like you just live your life in obedience to what God has called you. Those, that mom and daughter didn't even realize until a few years ago how God had used them. And so I feel like there's gonna be so many people that once we get to heaven, God's gonna be like, hey, thank you. Thank you for doing what I've called yeah. you to do. And look, because of your obedience, because you did what, what I called you to do, look how that changed the world. 
And I think that's really the yeah. true story. We just got to do, we got, we're all on the same team. We just got to work together yeah. and just do what God's called us to do. I love it. So you start this thing, love God greatly. You want to get women in God's word. You write these Bibles, Hayes. I mean, what have you seen? I'm curious, the barriers. Have you seen certain barriers that keep women from getting in God's word consistently? Absolutely. Like, honestly, I mean, even our whole translation started about, of you know, obviously, you know, creating them in English, offering them online and stuff. And then there was actually... Um, uh, missionaries, a husband and wife missionary team in Venezuela, uh, Erdurne was taking our English studies, translating them into Spanish because they're, they're just easy and sweet and simple to do and everything, and using them actually in the jungles of Venezuela with her women. And she had reached out to me and she said, hey, like, I hope you don't mind, but I'm taking your studies and I'm translating them and I'm using them with my women. And I was like, oh my goodness, like, thank you. Again, it goes back to that teamwork. Thank you. I so appreciate you doing that. And the only thing I asked was, could you give it, that translation back to me? Because I would love to offer it to more people. And just from one woman having her studies in English, experiencing it and wanting that for her friends and for her women, honestly, that's like the same story multiplied by 40 times. And that's how we've actually have all these translations. And so they're just outside wow. the English language. There are not a lot of women's Bible studies for women to help women get into God's word, read God's word for themselves. And so all of our studies, like I said, are translated into multiple languages. All the scripture that's needed for those studies are in um, in our, our Bible studies because we want women to be in God's word first. And then after that, then we come alongside afterwards and encourage and write devotionals and blog posts to encourage them. But we want women to also know that they can read God's word and they can understand it and it is for them. So. That's good. Okay, so I have to ask you now because I I have the, my two daughters here. Y'all just came up with a young women's Bible, and so um, tell me about this Bible. I'm really curious about this because you and I were talking offline before we started here. I found that a lot of kids' Bibles, or especially youth type Bibles, they're either cheesy or they're cartoons or they're something. And so I've not been a huge fan of a lot of different types of Bibles for kids. Um, and I'm really excited as you talked about this young woman's Bible, this young women's Bible that you have. I'm excited about this. And so talk to me about what this young woman's Bible, how it's different, you know, why it's good for teenage type girls um, to get in God's word. I mean, honestly, working on this project was a dream. So being able to, you know, Thomas Nelson came to me and said, hey, you know, we want to, you know, work with you in creating a young women's Bible. What features do you want included in it? And I was like, oh my goodness, like, I love this. Because again, I have girls in this, you know, 16, 14, and 10. And so what we really did with love, our Love God Greatly um, Young Women's Bible is just, we wanted to give, equip the next generation with more biblical knowledge, right? But then we didn't want to keep it with just that biblical knowledge. We wanted to actually um, have it go into heart knowledge. And so some of the things that we have, um, obviously every single book of the Bible has what we have, our SOAP Bible reading plans. It's just a simple way to interact and read God's word. Um, but then not only do we have our SOAP Bible reading plans, but every book of the Bible, we feature a country from around the world. We have a little bit of their church history, a way to pray for them. And then we have a testimony from a girl from that nation talking about God's faithfulness mm. and how he's working their life. So I love that because then young women can see how God is moving all over the world and all these young women's lives just at their same age. But then we go beyond that. Then we have heroes of the Bible. So these are, this is like you know Moses or Ruth or Esther. And we talk about their story and God's faithfulness, how God was faithful in their life. But then we go beyond that and say, okay, yes, God was faithful in the Bible. But you know what, after the Bible is written, God's faithfulness continued. And so then we talk about church history and we pick out women throughout church history in different time periods, in different areas around the world, and we tell their stories mm -hmm. and show God's faithfulness in their life, all with the, with the challenge of, listen, if God was faithful in the Bible, which he was, he's been faithful in our church history through all these generations through women, he's gonna be faithful in your life as well. Because this generation mm -hmm. needs it, right? Our, the world feels like it's getting crazier and crazier. I know just for my own girls and uh, different topics that we've had, they need to know that God is with them, that he has been faithful mm. in the past. They need to see that. They need to know those stories and to help them be courageous in the future and know that God is with them now. And he, what he, he's gotten all these people through tough times and he's going to get you through tough times and stuff too. I love it, Angela. I mean, I'm, I'm really looking forward to this for my girls because I just... 
I, I think it's so needed and inspirational stories. You know, I, I think the temptation for us as parents is to present God's word in such a way that they think that those are just kind of cartoon characters in the Bible, that they're not even real. They don't relate to them as being real as opposed to saying, you know, God was faithful then he's still faithful today. Look how we're still stepping out in faith as a family. And we can use these stories from around the world with other women or church history, like you're pointing out to show God's, continued work throughout history all the way till today and into the future as well. I think it's going to be a, a great resource. So thank you for putting that together. I'm looking forward to seeing it. Oh, I'm so, like I said, it was an honor and a complete joy. <laughs> okay. So for women listening, you know, you have this ministry, Love God Greatly. Uh, so I guess it's lovegodgreatly.com. Where can people find more resources? I guess that website, or is there anything else you'd want to point them to to help them interact with you or to hear more from you or to see more of the things y'all have put together? Yes, lovegodgreatly.com is where everything is at. Um, if you want to, you know, purchase obviously our Bibles, you know, the easiest place is on Amazon. And we're all, one thing I always mention with Love God Greatly is we are a ministry, not a, not a business. And so everything that, you know, purchases, donations, everything goes back 100% into the ministry. Uh, in about a week and a half, we um, are actually gathering 50 women from 30 different nations in Spain, and we're doing a week-long women's leadership intensive where we are just training women to be just leaders of their nations, empowering them, encouraging them, equipping them, um, all with the hope and prayer of just advancing God's word in these in these countries. So just to know that what you know also is going on with Love God Greatly, but all of our Bible studies can be found there. If you know uh, you know international pastor, mission missionaries, anybody who needs. Bible studies in multiple languages. Um, we're there, you know. We're there for you. And so, if you can go to our website, you can download them and use them uh, with with your women. That's perfect. Well, we're going to put those in the show notes. Some different links to different things. We're for sure having the show notes that the link to this young women's Bible because I'm just really, really excited to see it. And so, Angela, again, thanks for being here today and for what you do and starting this ministry to really equip and encourage women from all around the world to get in God's Word. Thank you for that. It's an honor. Thank you so much for, for having me on today. Hey, thanks for listening to this episode of Following to Lead. Uh, be sure to check out our show notes. Uh, we're always in putting in there links to resources in there, so make sure you check those out. Or you can find them on our website at followingtolead.com. Hey, uh, if you want to ever catch up with me personally, connect with me on Instagram at Kevin T. East or on Facebook. Or you can even find our Following to Lead with Kevin East Facebook site there as well. We're always posting uh, fun resources there as well. Hey, uh, let me leave you these last four words as I always do. Follow Jesus. Leave the